right. So we're gonna get started with some pressing exercise. So on the micro, you can use your front handles. If you don't have the front handles, uh, you can use the front platform. Uh, but anyway, so the first exercise is gonna be the chest press. So the chest press, uh, you've done it on the mega. So we're gonna put one red spring. Uh, you're gonna kneel on the carriage and then you can put your hands on uh, the handles. Now the handles were not really meant to handle a lateral pressure, uh, but that's okay, I guess, you know. So, you know, we're meant to be pushing down, not pushing on the side, but that's okay. Uh, so if you do the chest press, you're gonna have enough tension so you can push. So at least the red spring. Now, uh, if you're very light and you also maybe are not very strong, you can try to do the two black, but I think you'll, need, you'll still need the red spring. So just like Heather, you're gonna position your knees on the carriage, hands on the bar, and then your elbows are flaring out, very important. If you keep your elbows inward, then you do more of a tricep press. Now, your triceps are gonna be working out regardless of the elbow position, but if your elbows are in, you're gonna focus more on the triceps and shoulder junction. If your, elbow has, uh, if your elbows are out, you're still getting the triceps, but now you're focusing more on the chest and the shoulders. And nice. the eyes. You can also play with the different position for your hands. You can have your hands higher up, lower down, and that will also slightly affect where you feel in the exercise. What's up, Thomas? You're going to do the exercise with us? Nice. Hello. Thanks for joining. Uh, yes, I welcome you guys to try the exercise at home. Uh, again, you know, that tutorial is going to be on agreehome.com, so don't worry about it. But uh, you can also, are we putting this on YouTube or no? Okay. Okay, or maybe not. Okay, we'll, we'll put that on YouTube, yeah. All right, so again, when you do the press, alignment, hips are aligned, the knees and the shoulders, there's one straight line. You're pressing from the arms. Make sure that you anchor your hands. Anchoring your hands means that, uh, which camera is it? This one? Oh, anchoring the hands. Oh. <laughs> anchoring the hands means you're going to grab those handles, right? And if I had a platform over here, I'm really putting my hands around the platform, okay? I'm not pushing so much from the palm of my hand. I'm grabbing the entire uh, bar. Yep, just like that, Thomas. You got it. Yep, perfect. Okay, tricep press. You can also do the same exercise for the tricep press with your hands on the platform. And then I'm going to turn here. Watch out, Darwin. I'm going to switch over here with my cam. And I'm going to show you right over here. That's the SEP cam right over here. That's my POV, POV or whatever. And right there, this is how you put your hands. Good. And you're going to grab the, the bar, actually. There you go. So that's anchoring. When most people do the exercise, they'll put their hand flat like this. But I feel it's better for the wrist if you just grab the hands like that. Okay? You can also change your position. You can grab the front over here. No problem. Okay? Or the back. Beautiful. So those are the tricep press and the chest press that you can do. Perfect. Now we're going to go into any questions about this exercise. This should be pretty uh, uh, self-explanatory. And then you probably have done them already on uh, the mega. That's right, Thomas. I can see you. Good form there. Beautiful. And as always, as you do this exercise, do not, when you extend your arms out, right, keep your elbows slightly bent. Don't lock the elbow. Keep the shoulder in a socket always. And then keep that tension on the muscles. So you're going to slowly push out. And on the way in, you're going to resist the tension very slowly. Great. So any questions about these uh, three exercises here? No? Okay. Remember, you can always write them and then we'll, we'll read them. Okay. So the next one. So it's basically doing the same exercise, but it's facing the other way, right? I, uh, I feel that, you know, sometimes it's, um, it's pretty common sense that, you know, because of the design of the carriage and the platform, that if you do a movement one way, you can also do the other way. But apparently it's not common sense for some people. So we're going to show you this exercise now. So this will be kind of a reverse tricep press. So Heather has her knees on the platform, and then she's got basically her hands on the carriage. Okay. So same thing over here. You can put your hands either on the uh, back end of the carriage or on the front end of the carriage. If you put your hands on the front end of the carriage, you're gonna get way more tension. And it might not work for some taller people because you see that carriage goes all the way to the platform. Yes. Now, you can also try with your knees on the floor, 
but you might feel mm -hmm. that you pushed out. So if you have a floor that is slippery like here, it might not work out. So you, I recommend on this one to anchor your knees on the platform and then your hands on the carriage. Now, same position again. If you look at Heather, she is not moving at all her, her hips. So the hips is aligned with the shoulders and the knees. So that part it stays basically at that same angle. And now she's really primarily pushing from the triceps and the shoulder. Uh, this is a great exercise, by the way. I, I do it a lot when I do my, uh, my workout here at the gym. And I always do this exercise at the end to integrate the triceps. Very good. Yes. So now we can also do this with a diamond shape handles. So this over here is going to work just ahead of the triceps, just a little differently. So that's just a variation on the same exercise. Good. Perfect. Any questions about this pressing exercise yet? No. Moving forward, are you guys trying them at home? Uh, Thomas over here has, has put a, a camera so I can see him sideways, so I can actually check on his form. Thomas, that's actually very good, and I love your tempo. If you want to, you can do the same thing. If you are working on your micro right now, uh, why don't you put the camera on and then, so, and then sideways so I can see your uh, the side perspective, and I can give you feedback right away if you want to. Okay, next one. Uh, how about we do the one pressing back yeah yeah so now we're going to put two black spring and then we're going to do a chest opener so there's a couple of different vari vari variations on this one so heather showed me that today i love that I, I really liked it a lot actually so for the chest opener heather is sitting right here on the platform you can see that her back in a completely upright position and she's pushing uh, the carriage back now why do you think i like this variation a lot and heather cannot speak on this one why do you think i almost prefer to do the chest opener this way than using the cables please someone write it in the uh in the in the chat box come on why do you think i much prefer to do the chest opener sitting on the front platform pushing the carriage back than using the cables oh we have one better form yeah Kelly, can you explain why is it a better form? Because you're able to stop your arms right below or right at your waist and extend it back whilst maintaining an upright position, rolling the shoulders back and keeping your chest fully open as opposed to the cables where you might lean forward. There may not be there enough room go. to fully extend your arms. Yes, correct. So here, hold this to Darwin. So if you do the cables, a lot of people do like this with the chest opener. They let the hands come forward and then pull back. Right. That is not the chest opener. Chest opener starts by the hips and then back this way. So here, by positioning yourself on the platform, the carriage cannot go past you. You're forced to maintain that good form in the back end. That's why I love this version. You can, you know what? Try it on the Mega. I'm sure you can even try to do this on the Mega, no? Is that possible on the Mega? You know, I'm going to try this on the Mega, actually. Good job, Kelly. Yes, absolutely. So this is very good. And you can see over here, too, that now... See, the shoulder blades are being squeezed, right? And you can see more shoulder and tricep activation. And then the shoulders are rolled all the way back. And that's really what's opening up the chest right here. See? Very good. All right. So that's chest opener. And then we're going to show you another version of the chest opener that uh, Heather also came up with. And that's a uh, one-arm chest opener. And then for this one, you might want to go down to just one black spring. Okay, and it's the same thing. So you have kneeling over here, right, on the side. And now you have the carriage. But on this one, same thing over here. Keep the carriage sideways. I mean, to, to the back, right? Do not allow the shoulder, the carriage to move forward. Man, I'm digging this camera. This is good. All right, so chest opener. So again, all these uh, arm exercises are done for one minute, always using the slow tempo. And then really for the chest open, it's really, it's a, it's a very small and subtle movement, right? Good. And then we'll show you the other side. Oh, yeah, that one too for the triceps. Yes. So in, along, so, you know, we have the sexy back. So here's another adaptation of the sexy back 
uh, leaning back. So I love this one. So this is also forcing you to keep the shoulders back and then just to slowly kick the triceps back. Good, excellent. That's also a very good exercise, this one. So this is kind of a, how do you call this one? All right, tailbone tricep kickback. Guys, we got to help her with a name for this exercise. We need to come up with a name. Okay. Huh? Try tip? <laughs> All right, Darwin is out of the name gaming, okay? That's not fun, okay? We, we want some crazy name, like get it for scrambled eggs or catfish. That has nothing to do with the exercise, okay? Heather wants to come up with an exercise named dolphin, but I don't think that would be it. For the dolphin, we do need to... We, we need to have some movement in the spine. So we'll come up with an exercise named dolphin. Don't worry. Uh, so sexy back over here, right? This is kind of an adaptation of the sexy back. And that would be just like the, the chest open and the sexy back, which are two great exercises together. Uh, this would also be a great exercise after you do um, the chest opener on the micro. Any uh, picture? Triceps angel. I like that. Yes. Sexy angel. You know what, Kelly? I think you sold me on Sexy Angel. What do you think? <laughs> I, I knew like it, it would get you. <laughs> yeah, but on the back version, it's you're pulling. So it's different. But hang on a second. For, for the Sexy Angel, then I'm going to show that to Kelly. For the Sexy Angel, this is it. See, this is what happens, right? When you're on the micro, there's so many exercises that haven't been named and done yet. You guys are like, go for it. Name them. Uh, lift your feet Love up it. in the air. So that, that would be yeah. the Sexy Angel, right? Is that the Sexy yeah, Angel, guys? It. That's it. Yes. Love that. Now, stay in that position and keep your arms bent. Just stay right there. Don't move. Keep tension. There you go. Now do your ab work. I fucking love this, guys. If you are strapped for time and all you want to do is arms and abs, that's, that would be a great movement. This one right over here, look at that. Working your abs, working your triceps, working basically basic all, uh, all the muscles in your, um, in your abdomen and your trunk. Very nice. Well done. Nice little applaud here for Heather. Thank you, Kelly. So, Sexy Angel, that will be the name. Exactly. Thank you, Kelly. If you guys come up with other names, you know, please let us know. All right. I'm tired of coming up with all the names. I need you guys. All right. The tricep dips, you guys, I'm sure you've done it already. If you haven't done, this is already on the animation. When you do the tricep dips, what you want to do, and then this one, Darwin, if you can zoom in on me on this one, and then Heather. The elbow over here has to remain above the wrist, okay? So when, she, when Heather does the exercise, the elbow is not pushing back. She's keeping the elbow right above the wrist, and that really isolates the head of the triceps. You guys can see that? Yes? Shoulders. A lot of people have issued the shoulders. Limit your range of motion for the shoulders. If you feel too much torque in the shoulders, just limit your range of motion and let your body time to adjust and adapt to this exercise. And then every single time you return to that exercise, you will feel that it's getting a little easier to go a little deeper. Do not attempt to do full range of motion the first time. You can actually tear muscles uh, in your uh, rotator cuff. So work, you know, uh, allow you work with your body on this one. Okay. It might take you two or three uh, sessions to go all the way down. The other thing too, is that Heather's keeping a torso in a vertical position. And that's what I want. Okay. Keep that vertical alignment. So you can modify it with the feet down. You can also do it on the front, right? Okay. So the tricep dips can be done anywhere. It can be done on the front, facing the front, on the front, facing the back. If you have the handles on the back, you can also do them on the back. Okay. Any questions about the tricep dips so far? You could windshield wiper in that sexy angel. Yes. You know how to do windshield wiper? All right. There's a do. There's a windshield wiper. All right. Firebrand. Is that you, Sarah? Yes, that's it. Yes. That's what you're talking about, right? Firebrand sport. Yep. There you go. Windshield wiper. Yeah. Well, bicycle. Yeah, yeah guys. So any, any leg movement that you want to incorporate to this one is okay. But always make sure you keep your, your, your legs properly aligned, okay? And the hips and the shoulders have to be aligned. That's the, kind of the trick with this, right? Keep your spine aligned. Okay. Very nice. How are we doing so far? Good? Yes? All right. Uh, yeah, let's see on the triceps. So 
Uh, on the triceps, the one the one I love is also this uh, one arm kickback. Okay, so we've showed them with you on the cables, uh, but I really like it with the carriage. So for the uh, tricep kickback over here, and for this you kind of have to find your position uh, by the the side of the micro. You could be right on the halfway point or further back. Uh, obviously, the further back you are, the more tension you're going to get from the spring. Uh, so just be aware of this. And then exactly. So again, you can incorporate uh, your legs on this one. Uh, so you could do a tricep kickback or one arm tricep kickback with one leg up in the air. You could do it with both feet up in the air. You could do it with both feet and the right hand up in the air. I'm just joking. Okay. <laughs> you could probably do it with the both feet down or on your knees. One leg up. I don't know if you could do it both feet up. If you only the Zohan can do it both feet up. Remember, okay, there's some exercises are only meant for the Zohan, not for everyone. Okay, so triceps kick back. Love this one. Again, when you do this, uh, with, any, um, with any push, you're looking for the isolation of the joints. You don't want the elbow to move up and down, back and forth, because then you really want to focus on that triceps over here. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Um, we want to do, we did a chest opener. We did the tricep kickback. Did you want to show the, uh, oh, you want to do the, uh, this one for the rotator cuff? Okay, yeah. So for this one, I think the black spring might be a little too heavy. So in about two months, we're going to have the white and the gray spring. So I'll, re I'll recommend the white spring for this one because the white spring is a third of the black spring. And then we'll have a, we'll have a little video on the new springs very soon because I think we're going to first sample uh, on Thursday. So this is an exercise. You go like this. It's a rotator cuff, basically. But instead of using the cable, you're going to be using the carriage. And you're going to feel it right here. I mean, this is right there in the rotator cuff. That's just where you feel it. And the movement very small okay not very big and then what you're looking for here and you want to show that is again that you're not moving the elbow right that's it maybe when i uh, wear a clothes i should have like uh my left hand should be like my left arm should be green my right arm yellow and so i can show because everything disappears with all the the blackness over here so uh rotator cuff right there okay so that's another version of this one I'm not a crazy fan about this one. I think that if you want to do the, uh, this one, you might have, do, you might have a better, uh, better luck with the cables on this one. But that is, an, uh, that is a variation. We got a question. So we have a question. You can unmute your mic. Oh, oh is there a tricep exercise that really targets the long head? Uh, the tricep exercise, I would say the sexy back but I would say the sexy back with the cables. That would be the one that really works the long head of the triceps all the way. You know, I think for the long head, I would recommend the uh, the cables over uh, using the uh, uh, just just the machine without it. Does that answer your question? Yes, you yes. can buy new springs. Yes, thank you. And yes, yeah. you can buy two spring new springs in, in in two months. Correct. Yes. So we'll have. So right now the black spring, and then we're going to have a little video too. The black spring, when you when you extend that carriage all the way out to here, you get about 15 pounds of, of, uh, of tension. When we put the white spring on and you go all the way out, you'll get about five pounds of tension. So I think like for some exercise on the back end, uh, especially the express lunge, I think that people will enjoy this exercise much better with the white spring than the black spring. And for example, the exercise, this one, the hitchhiker that uh, Heather was performing, uh, the white spring will actually be better. So once you have the white spring, I think you'll have really good results with this one, you know? Uh, yeah, sorry. I, you know, it, it took me a little while to figure out, you know, that really need, you know, two more springs. So the white spring will go to five pounds. The black spring goes to 15. Uh, the gray spring is going to go to, uh, I think 40. And I think the red spring goes all the way to 60 or something like that. Um, but I will, I we will send, we'll, I have a, all the dimensions and then we normally will have the full poundage, 
but we'll have the pounds by number. So if you go to number one, you get X amount of pound, number two, number three, number four. So we have all these numbers for you. So you will be able to see exactly what the uh, equivalence in weight you'll get. Because I know there's been a, a question we get all the time. So we'll have that information for you for very soon. Okay, now let's go on to, yes. Okay, so we have two other versions using the carriage uh, on this one. We have one which is basically uh, a, a shoulder exercise, kind of a lateral raise, okay? So that's a deltoid exercise. So here, Heather is working both. So you have two ways you could do this, right? You could just pull the arm like this, or you can pull and then extend the arms. If you extend the arms, you're gonna work the triceps. But this is my, uh, primarily a shoulder exercise because using the shoulders to move the carriage out. Now, using the same position, you can also use so staying in the same, uh, same alignment, you can use the other hand, and now you can push the carriage over. And I have to tell you that that is a phenomenal chest exercise. I'm actually building a commercial unit that, all, that only does this. This is for bodybuilders. This will actually get the inside of your chest. So if you want to work on that cleavage, on the separation of your pecs, this is unbelievable. It'll give you great definition right over here inside uh, not many, uh, yeah, it will not make your boobs bigger. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna just define the pecs, you know, and then just give you more definition in between. Uh, but it's a great exercise that isolate your chest because a lot of the chest exercise that we do out there, like, you know, bench press, uh, if you do pushups or whatever, they don't really work the chest. They, they work the chest by stabilizing the pecs, but the pecs are not directly involved in the actual movement. Only a fly movement really isolate the chest, but more than a fly movement, it's really a pressing movement uh, against, uh, against like a bar, not using a cable. So, you know, me being obsessed with my chest, you know, uh, I'm always finding out new ways of making new machines. Uh, so that is actually a great exercise. Uh, what do we call this exercise? Chest fly? but it's more than a chest fly because you're also pressing. This, the, the, the problem with this exercise, it's both a pulling and a pushing exercise. Yeah, because the micro single arm hugger tree. Okay, we need to do better. Okay, how, all right, guys, come on, Kelly. We need, another, we, we need, yeah, I love this one. Yeah, it's a great exercise. Now, very important. I'm gonna grab my uh, little cam here. Thank you, Darren. Darren, <sighs> Darwin. I got... Sorry, Darren. Okay, I have too many friends with a D. I got Danny, Darwin, Darren, Dylan, Duran. I mean, just like, okay, I need darling, you know? Okay, now listen, right over here. So what you're looking for is that the elbow, this part right over here, that remains at the same angle. You're gonna open the elbow, but you always want to keep the same angle over here and then close it. And now if you can look at the chest, you can see over here, you know, really the, uh, the, the inside just like contracting. Uh, very good, you know. And then what Heather is doing fantastic, of course, is she's not moving the rest of the body. And that's, that's really what degree is all about, right? Look, her torso is not moving. It's only the right arm. So this is a pure isolation. And I love to see that on the triceps and the lats over here. Really good. Yeah, very good exercise. I love this one, Heather. So what do we have a name? Push pop, sexy fly. Uh, Kelly loves anything sexy on there. Anything sexy is a Kelly. <laughs> Sequoia hug. Ooh, I kind of like that. Yeah, we don't really have any, uh, any uh, tree, tree thing. Yeah, that could be it. Thanks, buddy. That could be it. I liked it. All right, yeah, we might have to start to do that. Segoya hug, I kind of like that. Yeah. We have the bowling. Oh, yeah, so she's got a great name. So for the bowling one, is great. Uh, maybe if we have like a smaller tree because the micro is tiny, but I love Sequoia hug. There should definitely be an exercise called, huh? A birch tree? Oh, really? Sorry, guys, I am not into my tree. So California oak, but even an oak is a big tree, you know? You know? Yeah. All right. I know it's hugger tree. I know, but it's really it's a it's a it's a variation of hugger tree. There, I like that. Uh, we'll think about this one, guys. You know, 
just let us know if you can find something. But I like that. I, I like the tree. Uh, I like the reference to the tree. Uh, another exercise that uh, Heather has is uh, money tree. <laughs> uh, definitely the money shot for sure. Uh, so money tree could work actually. Yes. Yeah. You like that money tree? All right. I think we may have we may have something here. Okay. So this one is called balling. Okay. So it and actually, if you ball, guys, this is probably uh, going to be. Uh, this could actually be a, a great sport specific uh, exercise. So if you like to ball, uh, you know, do this exercise at home, the micro, and then see if it actually helps with balling because it should. It works exactly the same muscles uh, in control. I like that. Now, if you look at Heather, though, she's keeping the shoulder in its socket, right? So with all the arm exercise, you always want to keep the shoulder in its socket because as you move your arms, uh, as you move your arm, your arm will have a tendency to come out of the socket. The problem is when it comes out of the sockets, then you have the tri you have the, uh, the the trapezoid muscles trying to compensate and then just overtake the exercise, and then you start working different muscles. And many times this is how you create knots in your neck and then your traps and everything. So very important to make a conscious effort to keep the shoulder dropped in the socket, and then to do the exercise with the shoulder staying in the socket. Very good. This is why you want to work with lighter tension. When you work with heavier tension, it's much more difficult to achieve. Very good. Excellent. So this one is called balling. You like this one? This is one black, correct. Yes. Can you do it with your hand on top or while uh, in the body position? Yeah, you could. Uh, on top. So the other hand, it's your left hand, like this. Right. Is that, is that what you're referring to, Jenny? With the hand on top? Like that? I meant like your hand on top of the bar. Or is that going to mess up your shoulder? Oh, yeah. Oh, so I think she's doing it. Yeah. So, so here now you're working. So on the other version, if your hand is under, there's definitely more yes. of, a, of an effort on the biceps and the brachialis junctions. You're working more the biceps and the brachialis, if you have your hand over, you're gonna start working more the real delt and uh, the triceps actually, yes. Yeah, uh, as you know, you know, as you know with my, uh, my post about uh, the lunges, right? There's no wrong way to eat a recess, right? So you can actually do this, you know, either way, it's totally fine, okay? Nobody, the Legree police is not gonna come knock on your door and then just get out, drag you out of the house and beat you up for that, okay? You can actually do it both ways, but if you're going to do balling, do the balling one. I recommend the hand, the under grip for this. Okay, just like you you ball, right? Like this. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Very nice, very good. Yes. Any questions about this one? Okay, moving on. Lying shoulder press. Oh, yeah. So uh, this is fantastic. So Heather showed me that uh, earlier today. I love this. So make sure for this exercise that you have a clean floor. And uh, if you're not, put a yoga mat or something like that. And here, uh, Darwin, go ahead and just maybe get a top view of, uh, of Heather on this one. Yes. So she's completely laying flat on the stomach. And then she's pushing the carriage out with one arm. Okay. And then you can do it one arm or you can do both arms. You have the arm like, you know, pretending. But really, the, the focus here obviously is on the arm connected to the carriage. And again, shoulder in its socket and then slowly pressing out. Yes. So the reason I like this exercise a lot is that you can get the full range of motion on the shoulders. And I would say that this is definitely if you're going to do a, sh a, a shoulder exercise, which you want to isolate the shoulders this is probably the best one. I know we have a couple shoulders exercise we do with the cables, but I like that better. Why? Because the hand, and then come over here, Darwin, I'm going to do that quickly, because the hand is completely aligned with the carriage right over here. So you see her shoulder, elbow, hand, it's all in one line. And that is the best alignment for the shoulder right there. So this is ergonomically perfect. And I should know about it because right now I'm creating a, a bodybuilding machine for the shoulder, which Darwin and I just worked out on and my shoulders are fucking sore as hell. And so I can't talk too much about it, 
but it's exactly in the alignment and it's exactly in the alignment of the shoulders. So this is actually a great exercise. This is a good exercise. So if you guys have a chance to try this, you're going to love that. Obviously, you're going to have to do, so it's one black spring. Uh, I think the black spring should be good for, for everyone. Thank you. Uh, the black swing should be good for everyone, but of course, uh, you can, by placing your body either further forward on the micro or further backward, you will get more or less tension. And of course, when we get the white and the gray spring, you'll have even more uh, options for the shoulders. All these movements are at least one minute. If you want to do for two minutes, that's totally fine. Three minutes, that's totally fine. A minute is what you need to hit your endurance threshold. So when I say that Legree is a is a core muscular strength and muscular endurance workout. The endurance comes from doing the exercise for at least one minute, okay? So at least you get that one minute, then you get your endurance out of it. You will get great definition in your shoulders from doing this, you know, this is fantastic. So if you want to do that for three, four, five minutes, uh, I guarantee you, you're gonna get great definition in your delts. And then you'll also get a separation between the shoulder and the triceps, which I love. Okay, <clears throat> this one, yes. So for this one, you might be too far out. Go forward a bit more. Yeah. So this is kind of a, also like a chest opener, but kind of a rowing as well. And then basically what Heather's doing over here, she's grabbing that uh, the carriage. And then she's now grabbing on the side on the, the ring of fire. And then she's pulling back and then keeping the elbows bent a little bit. And now she's really working. She's kind of isolating this left side over here. So uh, lats, a lot of uh, scapula work. Uh, real delts, you know, very good, you know, so I feel that this with the sexy back with the sexy angel, uh, the tricep press, you know, that would give anyone a lot of definition and a lot of separation between the three shoulders, the, the three heads, the triceps, and then the lats. Very good. And also what Heather's doing great too, she's keeping her back completely vertical. Uh, which is very important, you know, to keep your spine completely aligned on this one. Very good. Nice. Okay, now we're going to the rowers, the one-arm row. Is it this one that we're doing like this? In the back. Just back or yeah. no? Oh, okay, you want to the back over here? Do you want to have like a single one-arm row or no? We didn't have one with the black spring? Like one like this, I guess. Like this? We didn't have in the back. Oh, okay, all right. Then we'll do on the back. Yeah. You can do like that. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's right. That's it. All right. So this one, one arm row, knees on the platform. And then you can see right over here, you can see the lighting. You can see the definition in, show, uh, in Heather's shoulders and lats. And you can also see the lats here contracting all the way down over here. You can see that one line over here. And then the lats, the lats attach all the way to your tailbone. So I love the rowing because the rowing is one of the only exercises you can really feel the entire length of the lat. And by the way, you know, when you want to get your waist down, the lats is about two thirds of the waist. Lots of people don't understand that. The lats go all the way down to your tailbone. So if you want to get that beautiful tiny waist by tightening the, the, the back, you will get uh, a, a, a smaller, uh, a smaller waist, basically. And you can flip the grip. And this one is more triceps. Very good. And then you can do both hands at the same time. If you do both hands at the same time, I like the version. So depending on how you place your hands, you will target slightly different areas of the same muscle. I like when you put your hands close together and the elbows are out. And that gets a lot of the real depth. So now you can really see over here, Darwin. Yeah. So you can really see the definition. You can see the real delt. You can see the separation between the real delt, the triceps, and then the lats over here. It's great. Nice. Good job. Yeah. And then correct. Yeah, and the, so the, with the, the, the carriage having this ring of fire, you know, again, you can place your hands in different position on the, on the carriage, and then you will target different areas. But now you can see like a different part of the lats working. This is definitely working a lot of the uh, uh, scapula area. So a lot of the shoulder blades. Very nice. So that would be a great addition to the reverse giant wheelbarrow or the giant wheelbarrow. Let's say you did that for a minute. Then you can just top it up. Look at that. Look at those uh, 
Look at our definition popping up right there. Love it. I love the lighting, guys, too. Look at that. Yeah, see? It's working, guys. Right? Kelly says, this is my go-to for shoulders. This one, you like that one? Yeah, this is a very good no, one. No, the you laying know, for... down shoulder press. Oh, yeah. The shoulder pressing down, yes. Yeah, so the laying down shoulder press will work a lot of the, the front and the lateral delt. And then the one that uh, the Heather was doing is work more the real delt, the posterior delt. Uh, very important, guys, that when you do your shoulder to always uh, compensate, right? Keep the movement balanced. So if you do that, a front delt, always make, make sure you do some rail delts as well because you don't want to develop uh, unhealthy proportion in the strength, especially for the shoulders because we use the shoulders for everything. Oh, yes. Yes. So this is a this this could be easily misinterpreted with a, a, a wheelbarrow, you know. So make sure that you keep your hips back on this one. If you keep your hips back, this is going to put all the focus of the exercise on the arms. You could do the same exercise in a wheelbarrow position, okay? But then this is going to be this is definitely more confused now with the wheelbarrow. So by sticking your butt out on this one. And that's another exercise I do a lot. So when I do my lats here in my gym, I'll usually finish with this exercise as well. Why? Because you integrate the lats, the shoulders, and the triceps here uh, in that same movement. So it's a very healthy movement. But look at Heather. You can see, look at the triceps popping out. You look at also the shoulder blades. You can literally see all the muscles in the shoulder blades working, and those lats are totally popping. Yeah, I know. I love that. Yeah, I do it on the mega with the ramp. And uh, I'll use like one or two yellow springs. And uh, after I do a lat workout, this gives me the same kind of feelings as if I went swimming. Uh, so it's very good. It's just, you know, for me, it just helps me to get a, a good pump on the left. King Cobra. I cannot remember. I have to refresh my memories. But this could be King Cobra is, I think, when you do the uh, King Cobra is, I think, when you're in the backhand, but you also, you need to off the, the, the thing. It needs an off, yeah. So you go into basically to a full planking, elevated plank position. I think that's what King Cobra is. And that totally makes sense. Because if you saw a King Cobra, those motherfuckers, they go really high off the ground, you know. Uh, I'm not sure. What are we calling this exercise? Come on, guys. Help us out, you know. Heather made, 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 up, made the exercise. Now we need you to come up with a name. So... You know, again, you know, all these movements will start to uh, will add those animations, but we're going to need a name for some of them. Okay. The Sphinx. Ooh, damn. I like that. Oh, Firebrand. Yes. Kelly would have said the Sexy Sphinx, but that's like, I can't even say it in English. Sexy Sphinx. I was just like, I want to say a Sexy Sphincter. You know, that's what it's going to do. If I'm going to say, I don't say Sphincter, I'm going to say something like stupid like that, like I always do. Uh, sphinx, the Sphinx. That's it. Haha. <laughs> sphinx. Okay. So having a face is Sphinx. It's just like, I can't even. I can't even say that. You know, uh, the Sphinx. Yes, that's a great name. I love that. Yes, great. Love that. It's really good. Yeah, the Sphinx is really good. Yes. Okay. This one. So if you've done, of course, the uh, sexy angel on the front, you know, you could call this the reverse giant sexy angel, but. I think we can do better than that, Kelly, right? Let's do it. Let's come up with another word that has sexy in it, you know, for the back end. So this is not a pushing exercise. You're not going to work the triceps. You're working the biceps. But here you're working biceps, forearms, and the front delt, and also the abs, okay? Um, I would say that if you do the sexy angel on the front, you may want to compensate by doing this one because you're working the antagonist muscle, except, of course, for your abs. Your abs are doing uh, the same work over here. Uh, but very good exercise. So if you want to name this exercise too, it's good. Again, you have also a reverse grip. So I hope you see that. And yes, oh, you saw that, Tarvin? Perfect. So if you, what is that? Yes. Here, uh, Christian, zoom in into the uh, Heather's hand. And then Heather, change your hands one more time so people can see. So you have under, so this is under grip over here. And if you change around, that's over grip. And that will change. You can see how the forearms are active in different ways. By the way, ladies, 
do not be uh, afraid of working your forearms. You need your forearms. You need the forearms, shoulders, you know, uh, traps also is important. We don't really have a trap uh, exercise. I should make one actually, you know, because uh, those are actually all the uh, auxiliary muscles that your body uh, uses in so many exercises. Um, but this is good to strengthen your forearms uh, and for, to, to, to strengthen your grip. I like that. Yeah. Oh, there you go. You see, this is why it's costing me so much fucking money is, is like those animations because you can literally do like 10 variation of the same exercise just by placing your body differently on the carriage facing different direction. I love this one. So this is going to be working. Okay. Tell me, guys, which muscles are working in this exercise? Which muscle are you pulling from? Is she pulling from the triceps or the biceps? Good job, Firebrand. Biceps. So this is another way of doing the biceps, you know. Um, I would say that my favorite biceps exercise on the micro are going to be the cable exercise. Uh, the table and biceps is definitely my favorite one because you will feel that. Or the one laying on the back, you also feel full biceps. If you don't have the cable, I think you will get good results with this. Um, but the cable is definitely the best for the biceps on this one. Okay, you heard that? So if you guys cannot do the angel version where you balance on your tailbone, you can rest your feet down on the carriage. Okay, excellent. Lat pull down, yes. So for the lat pull down, you know, we didn't put the handles. Um, we, you know, I'm going to get some handles. Uh, Christian, we have a couple uh, pair of handles. Yeah, oh, I think I'm going to, hang on a sec. I'm going to, I have the handles right here. So if you don't have these on the back end, you can grab the rear platform like uh, Heather showed you one more time, please. Right. And then so make sure this one you feel the lats. And then Darwin, if you come over here and you can zoom in on Heather, you know, I want people to see how literally you can see from from right over here, the lats all the way down to her butt. And you can see this beautiful line right there forming. Do you guys see that at home? You can see those lights working. So if you don't have the rear handle, so if you have the handles on the front, you can put them on the back. Or if you don't have any handles at all, you can use a platform. But now we're going to show you the lat pull down using the handles on the back. Zzz. Yes, hopefully. Hopefully I still remember how to do that. Look at me. There you go. Or not. You got it? It's super simple, right? All right, okay. Mine is a little tighter, but that's fine. Okay, this one doesn't wiggle as much. All right. That's it. I don't know. There you go. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know why this one is not sting. Okay. That's okay. All right. So, on this one, if you had the handles, uh, obviously, the benefit of the handles is that you can grab the bar higher up. So, you'll get more of the lats. And now you can really see it working way better. You can see right over here, the lats all the way down right over here. You can see it popping over here. Nice. Okay, so make sure you keep the shoulders in the sockets, you know, keep the body aligned and then slowly move forward and back. Always keeping the tension on the lats. Very good. By the way, next, I think next month or in two months, we're going to start to show you the uh, ramp. Yes, ramp for the micro. You guys are so lucky. Yes. So when you do the ramp on the micro, you will also get a lot more. <laughs> Sarah's just like, no, not me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we have a manual ramp coming up, uh, which will allow you to, uh, to obviously move the micro up, uh, you know, up either way, the front or the back. But if you do this exercise with the micro slightly inclined, uh, you will get a greater lat activation. Very nice. And of course, you can do a single arm on this one. Uh, I don't think we've shown that. 
So just in case that uh, the two version is not enough, you can always do a single version. Very good. Yes. So you can also do, you know, again, you know, for the biceps, you can also grab uh, the platform under grip and then it's worked the biceps, you know, a lot more. Very good. All right, guys, we have about 10 minutes left. We're going to do the micro push ups now. Uh, we're going to keep the handles on for that one. Uh, but you could, oh, you want to take them off? We'll take them off now. Yeah, taking them off is the easy part. Okay, micro push ups. So if you don't have any springs attached, you don't have to do facing both ways. You can only do facing one way. You're totally fine. You can do the micro push up with your knees on the floor, knees off the floor. When you do this exercise, this is a lot like the standing under thighs or the standing out of thighs. Pretend that the platform is moving as well. So you essentially you're pushing platform the carriage away from each other, right? Away from each other. You're not pushing the carriage away from the platform. Pretend you're moving both away from each other. And that's going to allow you to keep the movement balanced and also uh, the movement centered. Good. So I love that one. This is a great one. If you are going to be using a spring, I would recommend to use a wide spring on this one, very light spring. And then you can do it basically uh, facing both direction. And that's going to give you a lot of good pec development, this one, because this actually combines both a press and a fly together, which I love. Nice. Yeah, so from that exercise, you can also do like a, a tricep kick, you know, in that position. Uh, this actually would be a great exercise because uh, usually in, a, in that kind of a pressing movement, the chest is used as a stabilizer. So when Heather is kicking the tricep, when, when, she, when, she, when, she, when she's kicking the carriage out with the left arm, she's stabilizing uh, the chest with the right and the left, but especially on the right side over here. Very good. So now if you really want to isolate the chest, you lean on your elbows. And I don't know if you went to the gym before and you have those pec decks, you know, you're sitting and then you're just pulling like that, right? So same thing over here. That's exactly what this is. So this really isolates uh, the chest. And so uh, if you want a, great, a greater muscle activation on this one, you'll put a black spring up until you get the white spring. And when you do white spring, you go on the other hand and you do it against the tension. And that gives you a lot. So right now you're pushing mostly out. Now by adding the springs, you're going to work mostly the shoulders. But if you want to work the chest, go on the other side, Heather. You're going to go on this side. And I'm going to remove. Oh, yeah, you didn't have yours on. That's why. Okay. So now this is going to work the chest a lot. But the black spring is too much. So wait until you have the white spring for this one. Because I don't want you to pull any muscles in the shoulders. But that is, yeah, you feel that? Yeah. And, and if you, yes. And if you do this with the spring, Remember that you're going to have to do facing both ways, right? To get the right and the left side. Good. Well, if we forgot any exercise, we'll wrap them up up in a part two of the arm exercise without the cable. You did, you did fantastic. Thank you. All right, guys, this is going to conclude the session. We kind of went over all these exercises, kind of skimmed through that. So if you have any questions, you can always email us at info at uh, Any topics that you want us to cover, please let us know. Uh, we're going to probably reshoot the one we did last week, the last time. The planks, we're going to redo that one because we had like too many technical difficulties. So we're in the process of just improving our, our, um, our production here. Uh, but remember that any, any uh, uh, questions that you have, please let us know. The micro is still being discovered, you know, as I said last year, two years ago, when I first made that machine, uh, it was very specific, you know, lunges, planks, you know, bare, the typical degree is essential, but now it's evolving into a whole miniature or micro version of the, of, of, of the mega. So it has it starts to have a life of its own. 
So uh, we want to explore that with you. I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the exercise. Uh, most of the exercise today were created by our master teacher trainer here, Heather. So thank you very much. And that's what I want. You know, I want you to go out there. I want you to play with the micro or when the mini comes out or when the machine comes out and just play with it. You know, we're going to give you a sample of what we, be, we think are the best exercise, but we probably have missed some. So if you come up with your own new exercise, please share it with us. So we can share with everyone else, you know, and it's all about discovering because the more exercise you have under your belly, you know, the more entertained, the more, the less boring you're going to become with the same exercise and things like that. Coming out for the micro this year. So like I say, we have the lighter and uh, the, this is a light spring, a super light spring and a, and a medium springs, basically. We're going to have a cable attachment different than the cables you have already. So a pulley system, just like you have on the Mega, and that's going to come out in a couple months. Uh, we have more auxiliary uh, accessories, like you'll see the sliders, you'll see like uh, uh, the disc. Where's the disc? Oh, there's right here, the pads, you know. So you can use this right over here to stand on, kneel on, to do your lunges, you know, kind of just make it, you know, more uh, unstable or whatever. Uh, a rower, I'm adding a rower machine. So at the back of the micro, this will pop off and then you'll be able to transform your micro into a rowing machine. Uh, we're going to have a, a, a ramp for the micro and that's going to come out, uh, probably come out this year and then be available next year. And then we're going to have a wall mount for the micro. Can what? You the Can you share more about the pulley system? Uh, we're going to have a tutorial on that. You know, it's kind of hard to explain, but basically, if you have a platform, you will be able to mount the pulley on the platform. So whether you have a platform or not, you will be able to add the pulley. Yeah, the pulley will attach. Yeah, the pulley will attach right over here. You'll be on the carriage, and then you have basically the long black steel cable. So they're not going to be a rope. They're not going to be uh, a bungee. They're going to be steel cable attached to, uh, to the micro. Uh, the reason I have that done is because you're going to be able to put your micro basically in a vertical position. And then from there, you can do triceps, you can do lats, you can do all that stuff. So this is going to become the most versatile fitness equipment uh, that we have. So give it like another another 12 months or so and then you have all this stuff coming out and then the mini is out and then i got to take care of the fucking mini after that so great you know i love it uh so any questions yeah before we go guys uh the pulleys uh, the pulley that should be available this summer yes because we're just finishing up the the, the last touch on that all right guys uh Thank you so much for joining us, as always, and we love you, and then we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Good job.